Welcome back with a smiling face. Important note before starting, if you are a fan of audio stories then our Patreon account is the best platform for you, join us on Patreon for the best audiobooks ever. Redeeming Himself Episode 11, Last Episode of Book 1 Chapter 72 to End Chapter 72 I set Azalea down on her feet and let her get her bearings. Once she was able to stand up on her own, she gave me a nod, telling me she was ready. I held her hand as I led the way into the room. I knew Felix would be keeping an eye on her the entire time as he brought up the rear. Inside, Gwen was on the floor with her hands and feet bound together. I eyed Felix. She was in the chair when I left, he said over Link. I noticed a chair knocked over next to her. Her mouth was also gagged. Declan and his mate stood in the corner. Mrs. Hale was sobbing into Declan's chest. Damien sat behind my desk, his head in his hands. Felix, please put Miss Hale in the chair once more, I said in a flat tone. Felix nodded. Gwen began to struggle even more, screaming behind her gag. That is enough Gwen. Cooperate now. I shouted in my alpha tone. She immediately stopped her struggle and laid still. I walked behind the desk and placed my hand on Damien's shoulder. Felix proceeded with Gwen. I am sorry about all this. You do not have to be here. Go back to your party, I said quietly. He looked up at me and stood, shaking his head. No, I need to be here he said with finality. I gave him a nod. I turned to Declan and his mate in the corner. Declan and I locked eyes. I am sorry it has come to this, I said. Declan nodded at me. I knew he understood he could not protect Gwen now. I turned my attention to Gwen. Felix stood behind her. Damien and Azalea stood on either side of me. Gwyneth Hale you are guilty of attacking the future Luna of Blood Eclipse. You have been warned previously that you are not to harm her in any way, yet you still chose to attempt to take her life. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I said to the entire room. Felix undid the gag around her mouth. She spit it out before shouting, She is not my Luna. She doesn't deserve to be Luna. I do. I should be your mate, not this trash. That is not for you to decide, I said, my anger rising. She will not take my pack, my mate, and my family, she screamed again. Gwen, stop this now. Declan yelled at her. Mrs. Hale cried harder. Azalea is my fated mate. The moon goddess chose her to be Luna of this pack. Who are you to challenge that? I shot at her. Azalea is such a nice girl, Gwen. But she is not our daughter. She couldn't take you place, MRS. Hale sobbed. Enough. Azalea shouted, surprising us all. We all looked at her. So, you have something to say finally. Gwen sneered. Yes, I do. I never asked for any of this. I cannot help who my parents were or what they did. I cannot help how I was treated when we were young. I cannot fight who the moon goddess made my mate. I never asked for anything from anyone. All I ever wanted was to be left alone from the torment of people like you. Damien and I both flinched at that. We had been part of all the antics when we were growing up. Just because the moon goddess didn't give you the mate you wanted, does not mean you get to hurt me. I did not ask to be Luna. But I will do a better job than you ever could. You don't deserve parents and a brother who care about you so much as to protect you after everything you have done, she finished. Gwen's mouth dropped open slightly. I guess she was not expecting that. I squeezed Azalea's hand. 
I was so proud of her for standing up for herself. I think my Luna should be the one to decide your punishment as you attacked her, I said calmly. I looked down at Azalea. She peeked up at me, doubt crossing her face for a moment. I nodded at her. I trust you to do what you see fit, I linked her. She turned her head to Gwen then to Declan and Damien. Mr. and Mrs. Hale, Beta Damien, I am sorry that we are here under such unfortunate circumstances, she said quietly. I am sorry, but Gwen poses a danger to not only myself but Liam and the pack as well. It is not safe for us to release her of her own accord. I do not feel that we should allow her to be sent with your relatives once again either. Her time away clearly did nothing to change her mindset. She paused, looking at me. Gwen, you will be held in the pack jail under strict observation indefinitely. You will be given access to counseling if you wish to cooperate. Maybe one day, you can reform yourself and assimilate back into the pack. You will not be granted visitation until I deem it beneficial to you. Her eyes locked on Gwen who was oddly silent. I smiled at my mate. She really did have an overwhelming capacity for forgiveness and mercy. I looked at Gwen. In my opinion, that is far more than you deserve. What Azalea has said will be done. Felix, can you and Austin handle Miss Hale? Felix nodded. Austin entered the room to help him. Mrs. Hale sobbed harder and Declan held her close. Damien watched his sister being taken from the room. Once she was gone, he turned to us. Thank you, Azalea. Thank you for letting her live, he said quietly. She gave him a sad smile. I am sorry for all the trouble I have caused, she said. He shook his head. No. Gwen was wrong. Even if her mate rejected her, she had no right to hurt you for being Liam's mate. And we never had any right to torment you as kids. I am sorry, he said. She stepped in front of me and wrapped her arms around him. He was surprised for a moment but hugged her back. It's okay. I hope she chooses to help herself, she whispered. She broke away before my jealousy could stir too much, coming back to my side. Declan and Mrs. Hale approached us from the other side of the desk. Azalea, thank you so much for showing Gwen mercy. I am so sorry that she tried to hurt you. We never thought, she broke down in sobs once again. I looked at Declan. Thank you, Alpha, Luna, he said in a strangled voice. He turned, pulling his mate with him and left my office. Lily peeked her head in as they exited. I turned to Damien saying, take all the time you need. We will take care of the party. He nodded at me. I grabbed Azalea's hand and pulled her from the room. Lily went in and we left them alone. I stopped halfway down the hallway. You were amazing, I said quietly looking into her soft green eyes. She wrapped her arms around me and buried her head into my chest. It didn't feel amazing, she said. I held her, stroking her soft, ginger curls. It never does, I told her. When she finally looked back up at me, I could see something was bothering her. What is it? What happened with the Delta from White Moon? Please tell me she begged. I sighed. He is currently locked up in the cells. Damien and I have been arguing about what to do. My beta is taking what I would assume to be your side. He wants us to go on a rescue mission and bring back any wolves willing to cooperate and only punish your lies and the ones who are threatening you, what do you think should be done? I think we should execute the Delta and send warriors to decimate what is left, I said. She flinched. I knew she would not like my answer. I wanted to keep her out of it. I cupped her face. They tried to take what is mine. They hurt you. And they hurt Lily. 
They need to know I will not stand for it. The world needs to know that I will not allow anyone to hurt you or threaten my pack, I told her. She was silent for a moment. Okay, she said. I trust you and Damien will find the best solution. We should go back. People will be leaving soon, I said. I looked at her, now noticing her dress was ripped. I pulled my jacket off and put it around her shoulders. She gave me a tight smile. We walked hand in hand back to the party. Azalea. Damien and Lily joined us to wish everyone farewell. They were not doing a send-off as they would be waiting a couple days before departing for their honeymoon. Katie, Betty and Lily's parents took over for Lily and I when it came to cleaning up. When we got upstairs, Liam helped me out of my dress. I slipped into one of his shirts, fixed my hair up into a bun, and crawled into bed with him. I rested my head on his chest, trying to process everything that had happened today. Liam's hand slipped under my shirt and stroked my skin. Little Luna, he said softly. MMM, I replied. When do you want to get married? I smiled. Somehow his perfect proposal had slipped my mind. I looked down at my hand and the beautiful ring on it. He reached up and took my hand, interlacing our fingers. He pulled my hand to his face, placing a sweet kiss on my finger. So, when, he prompted. I don't know. Shouldn't we tell your parents first? Now that they are trying more, I said. His arm wrapped around me tighter. You are always so considerate, he said softly. I picked my head and looked into his eyes. You are their only child. I am sure they want to be there and be involved. And I am sure there are some traditions as Alpha and Luna that your mom would be able to tell me more about, his eyes shot up in surprise. I wasn't expecting that, I see D my head in confusion. You being so willing to talk to my parents. I was ready to defend you not wanting to invite them, in all honesty, he said. I shrugged. It seems like they are trying. I am not saying that I am going to let your mom pick my wedding dress out, but we can be civil right. He leaned forward and pecked my lips. They can be included as much as you want. As long as I get to marry my little Luna, I don't care at all. I gave him a smile. I know they were wrong, and they do too. But we can all try and move forward right. The next morning, I woke up alone in our bed. The pillow next to me was cold, telling me Liam had been gone for a while. Usually, he waited for me to get up with him before he left me. I hope nothing has happened. I crawled out of bed and went to the bathroom. I brushed my teeth and let down my hair. It still held a lot of curl from yesterday, so I pulled it up into a high ponytail. When I left the bathroom, I was greeted with the mouth-watering sight of my shirtless mate holding a breakfast tray. There you are, he said in a husky voice. What do you have there? I asked excitedly. Breakfast for my fiancé, he said. He set the tray down on the bed. I could not help but rake my eyes up and down him. Although, we could skip breakfast and go straight for the desert, he said looking back at me. I blushed. He came over to me and grabbed my hips, pulling me flush to him. I giggled. He leaned down and gave me a heated kiss. When we broke apart, I was much warmer than before. As much as I want to have you for breakfast, he said with a groan. You should eat, little Luna. I am worried about you after healing yourself last night. Okay, I said. I did not mind letting him take care of me. It was sweet of him to always try so hard. We went over to the bed. On the tray, there was French toast dusted in powdered sugar, fresh strawberries and a few slices of bacon on both plates. This looks great, I said smiling at him. 
I am glad. I burnt about six pieces of French toast before I got it right, he said with a laugh. I giggled at him. After breakfast, we both got ready for the day. So, what are you and Damien doing today? I asked. We are going to make a decision about White Moon before he leaves for his vacation, he said. I knew he was worried I would want to discuss it more. Oh, I said. I still was not sure how to feel about White Moon. Also, my parents asked to have dinner with us. I told them it was up to you, he said nervously. Oh, really? Um, okay. Are you sure? I can tell them no. No, really. It will be fine, I said, giving him a smile. I love you so much, he said, coming to kiss me. I love you too, I said. I spent the day with Lily. We packed up wedding decorations and her dress. We snacked on extra wedding cake and I helped her pack for the honeymoon. We did not talk about Gwen and what had happened. I was supposed to have lunch with Mrs. Hale and some other women in the pack, but she had called telling me she wasn't feeling up to it and wanted to reschedule. Before dinner, Damien and Liam came to collect us. I could tell they were both tense. You ready, baby, he said coming up behind me. Yeah, let's go, I said. We were meeting his parents at a restaurant. I think Liam wanted to have this dinner in a public setting, so his parents were pressured into civil behavior. We headed out to his SUV. I wrapped my coat around me, trying to block out the cold. Liam instantly put his arm around me making me warmer. Once we were in the car, he turned the heat up and headed out of the driveway. He was quiet the entire time we drove. Do you want to talk about it? I linked. He turned his head to look at me. He let out a sigh. Later, he replied. I nodded my head at him. I put my hand on his arm and we drove in silence. Before long, we were pulling into the parking lot. Liam parked the car and climbed out. I waited for him to come around the car. He opened the door and stood there. I gave him a curious look. I am sorry, sweetheart. I just had a stressful day, he said brushing a strand of hair away from my face. Are you sure you want to have dinner with your parents? I am sure they would understand, I asked. No, we're here. We should do this. Okay, I said with a smile. Can you do something first? He gave me an adorably puzzled look. Give me a kiss. His face broke out into a smile. I think that can be arranged, he said before his lips were on mine. I held his face in my hands. I could feel his frustrations in his kiss, but I could also feel him relax from the contact. When we broke apart, his face looked a little more relaxed and normal. Let's get inside, he said. He helped me out of the car and we walked hand in hand inside. When we were taken to our table, Liam's parents were already seated. Liam's father gave us a curt nod and his mother a bright smile while Liam pulled my chair out for me to sit down. You are such a good boy, Lunalissa said. It is simple manners, mother, Liam said in a bored tone as he seated himself. So, why are we here? No reason to be short with your mother, Alpha Robert said. The waiter came by then to take our orders. Thankfully, Liam ordered for both of us. This was already incredibly awkward. So, mother, father, why have you asked us here? Liam said in a slightly annoyed tone. Well, first, congratulations are in order, Lunalissa said, giving me a smile. I blushed. Please dear, I would love to see the ring, she asked me. Oh, um, sure. Of course, I said. She held out her hand and I gave her mine. 
It is beautiful, she said looking at her son. I gave her a small smile and nod. We should talk about your mate's Luna ceremony and your nuptials, Alpha Robert said. And what exactly is there to discuss? Liam said. There are expectations that must be met by any Luna of this pack. Your mother and I would like to support your mate in taking of the Luna position, but we cannot put our support behind someone who is not strong enough to lead her people, he said in a dark tone. Now, Robert. We know Azalea may not be physically strong, but I told you we shouldn't discount her, Luna Lissa said. I could see the worry in her face as she looked between her mate and son. And what exactly do you mean about not strong enough? What do you know about her? Liam said. I could feel his anger welling up inside. Don't think I am unaware of what happens around that pack house. If the girl is not with you, she has a personal guard on her. She should only need such a thing when you travel away from your pack lands, Alpha Robert stated. I looked down to my lap, no longer able to hold their gaze. Nothing he was saying was anything but the truth. The way I handle Azalea's safety is none of your concern, Liam growled. Your mate's perceived strength affects this pack, Alpha Robert said. Robert, Lunalissa tried to stop him. No, mother. This is how he actually feels. Let me see if I have all this right. Mom convinced you to make nice as soon as she realized that I was going to be with my mate, and she would miss out on any grand pups that may come along. I bet people around the pack beginning to change their opinion on her was also starting to reflect bad on you too for not being at the announcement. You begrudgingly agreed to accept Azalea to make mother happy. But you do not really feel that way. You may have some regrets but it's clear you don't believe she is fit to be by my side, Liam said angrily to his father. Alpha Robert's face gave nothing away. Luna Lissa looked worried. Son, that isn't entirely true. Your father is just concerned about the pack. Once an alpha, always an alpha, she tried. I tried to make myself small as I fought back tears. I never wanted to come in between Liam and his family like this. Liam stood up. There is no excuse. It's clear where he stands. If you cannot accept my mate wholly without needing to test her, then you do not need to come to the Luna ceremony or wedding. Liam turned to me and held out his hand. Come on, sweetheart. We are leaving. I grabbed his hand and stood but I did not let him lead me out. Wait, Liam, I said to him. He stopped, a little taken aback. Alpha, Luna. I know that there are hard and uncomfortable feelings surrounding me and my mating with your son. I feel like the moon goddess gave me Liam for a reason. You raised an amazing, thoughtful, strong and caring man. When I watch him interact with pack members, I feel nothing but pride and awe. Every day, I try to work as hard as he does to take care of Blood Eclipse. I am sorry that I am not a physically strong she-wolf. I would give anything to have access to my wolf. Liam does not make me feel like anything less. And because of that, other pack members are not either. Liam is your only pup and I don't want to hurt your relationship. I would really appreciate it if we could all find some middle ground. I probably won't ever be your favorite person, but I would like it if we could get along, for Liam's sake. Luna Lissa had her hand over her mouth. Alpha Robert looked contemplative. Finally, he stood and said, Young lady, I appreciate your candor. I am sorry for how things used to be. But you are right. We are all adults, and we can find a middle ground. He held out his hand for a handshake. Let me just say, you will make a great Luna if you can make Alpha's compromise, he said. I grasped his hand and shook it. I turned to Liam who was silent. Son, please sit. 
let's have dinner and start fresh. We would really like to get to know your mate, Lunalissa said softly. I looked up at Liam. We can stay. You don't have to forgive them all at once, just extend the olive branch, I linked him. He looked down into my eyes. I could tell he was conflicted, and his pride was getting in the way. I placed my hand on his chest. I think you will regret it if we leave. Let's try, I tried. Finally, he nodded. My Luna has spoken, he said to his parents and we took our seats at the table. Chapter 73 We were pulling into the pack house driveway. It was snowing in earnest now. Winter was officially here. Dinner had been manageable. There were a few times where I had to rub Liam's leg under the table to help him calm down but overall, it seemed to have gone okay. He had been pretty quiet on the way home, simply holding my hand and driving us back. I didn't try to make him talk. I knew he just needed to be in his own head. When we finally parked, he did not move right away. I turned to him, giving him a curious look. Thank you for tonight, he finally said. Of course, Liam. I would do anything for you, but I really didn't do much, I said. But you did. My father and I have had a strained relationship for a very long time, even before I knew you were my mate. Tonight, you were able to bring us together even though you have been a dividing factor, he said reaching up and brushing my hair out of my face. You displayed more elegance as a Luna tonight than my mother ever has. I am so proud of you. I could feel myself blush at his words. I just want everyone to get along. I hate how upset you get when you fight with your father, I told him. Thank you, baby. You showed him just how amazing you really are, he said with a small smile. Liam, what were you upset about earlier? Is it White Moon? I asked. He sighed. Let's go upstairs and talk about this. We shouldn't sit in the car all night, he finally said. I nodded. He got out of the car and came around to open my door. He held my hand tightly as we walked up the snowy path to the pack house. Once we were upstairs and changed, he sat down on the couch. I came and curled up next to him, letting him drape his arm over me. Are you ready to talk about it? I asked quietly. He sighed. I guess, he said. He paused for a moment before continuing. We sent a messenger to White Moon. He was to inform them that we were holding their delta until they released any wolves belonging to White Moon that wished to join us as well as the mate and pup of the delta. They were given three days before the messenger was tasked to return and we would consider them our enemy. I nodded my head. Okay, that seems reasonable, Liam closed his eyes and rubbed his temple. They sent his head back this morning. I gasped in horror. Liam looked at me. I didn't want to tell you. I wanted to save you from this but there was a note saying they were coming for you, why am I so important? I don't understand, I said quietly. I don't know why they want you so bad either, baby, he said pulling me closer. They won't take you though. Tomorrow, I will be leading a group of warriors to White Moon. I looked up into his eyes. I could tell he did not want to do this. Is there nothing we can do? You know, so we don't have to, I whispered. He shook his head. Promise you will come back to me. I asked turning my face into his neck. Always, he said into my hair. He held me for a minute before speaking again. I need you to stay with Felix always while I am gone. I need you to be protected at all times. I know it will be annoying, but I have arranged for him to stay with you until I am back. Can you handle that for me? I nodded. If he was worried about me, there was a chance he could get hurt. 
he shifted me so that I was straddling his lap. I looked into his eyes. I am sorry about all of this, Azalea. I shook my head. It isn't your fault, I said. I am always afraid you will just snap, that the next bad thing is going to break you. I don't know why I keep doubting you, he said, running his hands through my hair. He leaned forward and captured my lips in a kiss. I wrapped my arms around his neck, and he pulled my body closer. Finally, he stood holding me by my thighs and moved us to the bed. He laid down, letting my body cover his. I just want to hold you tonight, he whispered. I shook my head and cuddled closer to him. That is all I wanted tonight as well. Liam had been gone for three days now. I hoped he would be coming back soon but we had heard nothing. I had tried linking him a few times but apparently our link had a distance limit. Right after Liam left that first day, I had seen Damien and Lily off to their honeymoon. Austin and I were going to handle the pack until Liam was back. For the first two days, I kept myself very busy. I helped around the pack house and with a few people in the pack. Mrs. Hale had reached out and asked me to have lunch with her. It was pleasant and I assured her I was fine after everything with Gwen. I knew she felt bad, but we were still able to have a pleasant meal together. She introduced me to a few of her friends afterwards that were all in a book club together. We spent a few hours talking about our favorite stories and authors. They promised to let me come to their meeting next month as soon as the book was chosen. Everything I was doing to keep busy was just pushing away the sadness I was feeling with Liam gone. By the third day, my heart was heavy, and I didn't want to get out of bed. I spent a good part of the day lying in bed staring absent-mindedly at a book that I couldn't actually read. Missy had come up after dinner and asked me to help her make some brownies. Now. I stood in the kitchen, chopping some chocolate for the brownies and frosting. Do you really think Delta Austin will like these? Missy asked excitedly. I giggled at her. Felix cracked a small smile. Yes, he will. He loves everything you make. I told her. When we were all finished, I helped Missy cut up the brownies and put them on a plate to take up to Austin. I watched her skip out of the kitchen with the plate in her hands. I went to work cleaning up the mess we had made. Felix brought some dishes over to the sink for me to wash. You know, one of these days, I will get you to talk in more than just one word answers and grunts, I said, looking sideways at him. He nodded his head with a small smirk. Did you want a brownie? I saved a couple to the side, I said. He shrugged and turned around. I smiled a bit knowing he was going to eat one behind my back. When I was finishing up the dishes, Austin came into the kitchen holding a smiling Missy's hand and holding an empty plate in the other. I gave him a knowing look. Someone made me eat every bite, he said happily. I am sure it was a sacrifice, I said sarcastically. Someone has to be willing to do the hard jobs around here, he said in mock exasperation. I laughed at him while Missy gave us both confused looks. Anyway, I need to be getting back to Abigail. She wasn't feeling well earlier, he told me. I nodded and glanced at the clock. He handed me the plate and bent down to give Missy a hug before leaving us in the kitchen. I looked at Missy. Is your mom coming to get you soon? It is getting pretty late, I said. Her cheeks got red as she looked down at the ground. I don't know Luna. She didn't come home last night so I came to the pack house today like Alpha Liam said I could, she said quietly. I kneeled down in front of her. Missy, would you like to stay here tonight? Maybe I can try to see if I can call your mom tomorrow. I asked her. She nodded shyly. I gave her a smile and lifted her chin so she could look at my face. 
You are always welcome here, Missy. And you can always call me or Alpha Liam or Delta Austin or even Grumpy Felix if your mom doesn't come home okay. She looked from me to Felix. I looked at him too as he stood on the other side of the counter with his arms crossed. He did not smile but just nodded his head at her. She looked back at me with a small smile. Thanks, Luna, she said before wrapping her small arms around me in a hug. I stood and took her hand. Let's go find you some pajamas and get ready for bed, I said with a smile. I led her out of the kitchen and up to one of the spare rooms we now had for kids like Missy. I had now spent two whole days taking care of Missy. I did not mind much as it kept me busy while we waited for Liam to return. I was getting worried though. I had tried to contact her mother a few times and gotten nothing. Austin had sent a patrol wolf over to her house and they reported that it appeared no one had been there. I had just put her to bed and was now upstairs in my own bedroom. I was in the bathroom putting my hair up while Felix was setting up his cot in the bedroom. I sighed. I really missed Liam and I was not sure what to do about Missy. She wasn't an imposition, but her mom had never been gone like this with no word. The bathroom door opened, and I turned around confused. Felix would just barge in. The smell of fresh forest hit my nose. My heart stopped when I saw the man standing in the doorway. Hi, little Luna, he said. My face broke out in a giant smile as I ran and launched myself at him. He caught me in his arms easily and spun us around. My body felt whole being in his arms again. After five days of worry, I felt the tension in my body start to fade. Did you miss me? He said into my neck as he snuggled and held me closer. After a few minutes, he set me down on my feet and I looked up into those handsome blue eyes I love so much. His hand came up to my face and his thumb wiped away wetness on my cheek. Don't cry, little Luna. I'm back and I'm okay, he said quietly. I did not even realize I was crying. I missed you and Gavin so much, I said. He tilted his forehead down and rested it on mine. You have no idea how much we missed you, he said. Have you eaten? Do you need a shower? I asked. All of that can wait. Right now, I need you in my arms, he said with a smile. I smiled back. I would like that, I told him. His lips came to mine in a possessive kiss as he picked me up. I wrapped my limbs around him and melted my body to his. Warmth coursed through my body as the pleasurable sparks invaded my mouth from his kiss. He moved us into the bedroom, laying me on the bed with him on top of me. When he finally broke our kiss, I looked up into his eyes to find one his normal bright blue and one the dark lustful blue I get with Gavin. My face gave away my concern because Liam said, It's okay. Gavin wanted to see you too. We can both be present at the same time for short periods. He nuzzled my nose. Wow, that's amazing, I said softly. No little mate, you are amazing, he said and captured my lips once more. Hours later, Liam and I lay in bed calming down and cuddling. As much as I never wanted him to leave me again, I could not say I did not love that welcome home present. I listened to his heartbeat steadily in his chest while he played with my curls. How did it all go? I asked finally. He had been quiet and contemplative since we finished. Better than I expected, he said. What do you mean? Jacob and Felix should be done arranging things by now, but we have about 30 new pack members, he said. My head shot up to look into his eyes. He had a small smile on his face. How? I mean they declared war. You were going there too, I could not say the words even if this was an accepted part of wolf culture. When we arrived, we realized that the Delta was telling us mostly the truth. 
the pack had been almost demolished. The few who were leading were doing so in the worst possible way. Every adult and capable child was slaving away to make repairs to homes and their pack house. Even the elderly. Mothers were carrying their pups on their backs. But there was maybe fifty or so total that we could see. They were being given scraps of food twice a day, not a single proper meal. We managed to abduct a teenage girl. She was willing to cooperate and tell us everything. She helped us to inform all those who wanted to leave be ready when we attacked. We were able to save thirty of them. The rest fought and we did what we had to do, he explained. And my grandmother? I asked. She fought until the bitter end, he said, shaking his head. And their Delta's family? We were able to rescue them, he said. They will be reunited soon I am sure. I came ahead to get back to you. And the warriors you brought? Only a couple minor injuries. They will be treated and good as new by tomorrow, he said with a smile. Oh Liam, I said and hugged him close. Once I saw what was happening, I knew I couldn't let you down. I knew they needed help and the actions of their leadership were not what they would have chosen, he said into my hair. I wish I could have helped you, but I am so glad you were able to save some, a couple aren't doing well but they will heal with food and rest. My head shot up again. Can I help? His Redemption, Complete His Series, Chapter 74 Liam After a lot of begging, I begrudgingly agreed to let Azalea help heal some of the injured from White Moon. I made her promise to help no more than one each day. Luckily, most of those who were only minorly injured healed before her help was necessary. All the White Moon Wolves were back to good health within a week. Word spread around them and the rest of the pack about Azalea's help. People were stopping by the pack house just to say hello to their Luna and I could not be happier. A welcoming party was set for two days from now for all the new White Moon members. The pack had managed to already construct a couple small homes, and more were in progress for the new members. The White Moon members seemed to be integrating seamlessly and Azalea was all smiles every day. The pack house was full and chaotic for the time being, but Azalea wasn't phased. She moved around everywhere like she was floating, helping people left and right. Meals were coordinated and served efficiently, and the chores were shared by all. She had even taken it upon herself to help find jobs within the pack for almost all the new members already. She had the idea to add a position for the White Moon Delta within my own team. He had accepted graciously, and Austin had made sure he fit in right away. As I watched my pack over the last week, I felt nothing but pride in what we had done. Azalea's leadership of the integration had left me open to deal with all the normal duties as Alpha and go over everything Austin had done while I was gone. Damien had come back a couple days ago and was up to speed as well, not having to help with arrangements as usual. Now we had one problem left to solve, what to do with Missy. We had sent wolves to her house many times and they had all reported no change. It appeared her mother had not been home for well over a week now. During the day, she was her normal cheerful and helpful self. But we had caught her a few times when she thought no one was looking. She would cry and call for her mom. I knew it was weighing heavy on Azalea's heart. My office phone rang. Hello, I said. Alpha Liam. So good to hear your voice, said Alpha Langston. Alpha Langston. Great to hear from you. What can I help you with? Well, we found someone belonging to your pack, he said in a worried tone. Oh. I sat up straight. No one was missing that I was aware of. Unless he meant. Yes. A she-wolf actually. Did she give you a name? That is the issue. We found her dead in the woods. I sucked in a breath. Understood. Thank you for calling. 
I will send a few wolves to collect the body. Sorry, Liam. Looks like a suicide. Let me know if you need anything and say hi to your wonderful mate. Thank you, Langston. Will do, I said and hung up the phone. I sighed. I wonder if this is who I think it is. I walked into the pack house kitchen to find my beautiful mate. She did not notice the door opening as she continued to help prepare all the dinner food to be served. I sat there and stared in adoration at her. You're a pathetic little puppy when it comes to mate, Gavin teased. So? And don't act all high and mighty. You can't tell her no either. I could if I wanted to. I laughed at him. I knew what I had to tell her wasn't good news, but I couldn't help the joy inside me every time I laid my eyes on her. She finally realized I was standing in the doorway. A smile stretched across her sweet face as she walked over to me. My alpha, she drawled in a low tone. My eyebrows shot up in surprise. Little Luna, I said, giving her a smirk. What do we owe the pleasure? Hmm. I can't remember now, you have distracted me, I said pulling her flush against me by her waist. She giggled in my arms making my CK twitch. How about this? I said as I captured her soft pink lips in mine. I kissed her hard after missing her all day. She broke away from me panting slightly. Now, now, my alpha, she teased. I still need to finish up dinner. Then you can have whatever you want. I groaned. This little minx. Actually, I said. There is something I need to talk to you about. Think you can step away. Her face scrunched up in concern. We really had not had any bad news since I returned from White Moon. Sure, she said. She turned around and scanned the room. Finding Lily, she called, Hey Lil, finish up please? We will be back for dinner. Lily gave us a mischievous smile. Go make us some alpha pups, she called. Azalea blushed and shook her head before turning back to me. Let's go, she said. I grabbed her hand and led her out of the kitchen. I headed towards my office because I didn't want us to be interrupted. I would tell Damien and Lily later, but Azalea should know right away. She had spent the most time with Missy lately and she should be the one to decide how we proceed. When we got inside, she leaned against the desk and looked at me expectantly. I shut the door and came over to her. I got a call from Langston today, I started. Oh, how are they? They were so lovely at the wedding, she said. They are well. But they found someone on their territory. A she-wolf belonging to our pack, but we have no missing wolves except, she trailed off as realization washed over her. No, Liam. Don't tell me, I nodded my head as her eyes filled with tears. I sent wolves to retrieve the body. I checked myself. It is Missy's mother. She committed suicide just outside the border. My uncle says it looks like she did a few days ago. He has her body for now, but Missy. Now she is an orphan. How do we tell her, Azalea cried. She shot forward and wrapped her arms around my waist. I let her sob into my chest as I held her. I know. This is not what I was hoping to find. I let her cry for a few more minutes until she calmed down a bit. Her swollen eyes met mine. What are we going to do, she croaked. Well, we need to tell her for sure. I think maybe we should wait until tomorrow. Let her have one more night. She'll need a guardian and a place to go. She can stay here in the pack house until then. She nodded her head. She straightened up. Yes, we should wait until tomorrow. Austin, Abigail, and a few of the other families were going to do a movie night in the rec room tonight. 
Missy made everyone cookies. She should get one more fun thing, she said. She had some resolution in her voice now. We should tell Damien and Lily, probably Austin as well tonight though. Lily can help me in making arrangements for the funeral and finding her a foster family. She is close to Austin so he should know so he can help her. I nodded. I pushed her hair behind her ear and gave her a smile. What? she asked. You are already the perfect Luna to this pack, I said softly. She blushed. Let's go down and have dinner with our pack members. We can talk to everyone after dinner and begin arrangements in the morning. I will call my uncle about a timeline for the funeral later. She nodded her head. I bent down to give her a soft kiss before I grabbed her hand and led her downstairs. We were laying in bed that night. We had told Damien, Lily, and Austin about Missy's mother. Austin had put up a good front all night with Missy during the movie. Lily agreed to take care of the funeral arrangements. Damien and Austin were going to help take care of Missy's home and belongings. Azalea and I agreed to be the ones to tell Missy and find her a foster family. Azalea was fidgeting while she read a book cuddled up into my side. I had a movie on but all her moving around was making it hard to concentrate. I could feel something was bugging her. I muted the TV and looked down at her. Baby, what is wrong? I asked. I am sorry. I am just worried about Missy. Why? Every time she has brought friends over to the pack house and their parents have come to get them, it doesn't seem like they like Missy much or maybe just don't like her mom. It doesn't seem like she had many friends in the pack, especially after her mate died, I sighed. I know. But someone will help her. We have a great pack. I am sure someone will fall in love with her. Someone already has. I raised my eyebrows. Who? She sat up and faced me. We have. I looked at her confused for a moment. I love all my pack and so does she. We are Alpha and Luna. She wants to adopt her, Gavin said. My eyes widened in realization. Please, don't be mad. I know we haven't even gotten to my Luna ceremony or talked about the wedding. And we haven't even begun discussing pups for that matter Azalea, breathe, I stopped her. She nodded her head. I am not mad. But can you explain how you came to this? Help me understand. Liam, I knew how much you loved that little girl the first time I met her. You are so patient and sweet with her. You give her special attention she doesn't get elsewhere. The only person she is more smitten with would be Austin. I also know that you have been giving her mother extra money to take care of her, buy birthday presents, Christmas presents. I also love her. So much. She is so full of life and I want her to always be that way. I know it might be weird at first and we would all need to adjust. I don't think I am ready to be a mom but I also think we are the best people to take care of her. She knows us, she is comfortable here. I understand if you don't want to, but I think we should let her decide. I stared at her amazed. She was right. I did give Missy special treatment. We had been fortunate enough not to have any other orphaned children in the past few years. After everything that had happened with Azalea, when Missy came around, I couldn't not help her. And I was helping her mother with money regularly. Of course, I wanted pups with Azalea, but I wasn't expecting anything any time soon. We had come so far and overcome so much that I was content with the way things were. She was right, we had never once discussed pups. I didn't know how many she wanted or if she even wanted any. Do you want pups, was all I could think to say at the moment. Yes, eventually. We should probably get married first. 
but that also would not stop me from taking care of Missy. Plus, I think if she lived here with us, she would have Lily, Damien, Austin, Abigail, and others looking out for her. Felix is even pretty taken with her. She is one of the only people not afraid of him. Okay. Let's give her that choice. If she wants us to be her guardians, we will be. If not, we will find her a family, I said. Her face slowly stretched into a smile. I pulled her into my chest, hugging her. Do you feel better now, little Luna? Yes. Thank you, she said quietly. I could feel through our bond that she was calmer now and a little less sad. Azalea. Missy sat in front across from Liam and I at a table in the dining room. We decided not to do this in his office. She fidgeted around a bit and I was sure she was nervous. We had never asked her to sit down and talk with us like this. She was smart enough to know this had to do with her mom being gone. Missy, we wanted to talk to you about something very important, Liam began. Sweetie, we found your mom, I said softly. Her eyes perked up. You found my mom? Yay. I can go home soon right? When is she coming to get me? I looked to Liam and he nodded for me to continue. She isn't sweetheart. That is what we need to tell you. Your mom has passed away, Missy was silent for a minute. She looked down to her lap. I could see the tears starting to run down her cheeks. She didn't want me anymore now that daddy is gone, did she? No, no, no. Missy that isn't it at all. Please sweetie, don't you think that, I said quickly. Missy, can you look at me? Liam said. Her head peeked up as she sniffled. Do you know what a mate is, he asked her. She nodded her head. It is the perfect gift you get from the moon goddess for being one of her children. It is the person you love forever and ever. He nodded at her. Do you know that a mate is half of your soul? So, when two mates find each other, they become one complete soul. Missy shook her head but listened intently. When you find your mate and you become one, you can feel everything they do. Sometimes you even know what they are thinking. And you can always find your mate, so you never get lost. But when your mate dies, it can hurt a lot. You lose half of your soul when your mate dies, and you feel lost because they are gone. So, when daddy died, mom lost part of her soul, she asked. Liam nodded at her. Yes, she did and it hurt her very much. She tried to be strong for you, but she was very hurt. It was awfully hard for her to take care of you because she hurt so much. She was so happy that you were spending time here with Luna. After all the hurting, she was weak though. She wasn't strong enough to hold on anymore, he explained softly. She died because she was hurt. Missy said. We both nodded at her. Tears continued to flow from her eyes. Why didn't she ask Luna to fix it? My heart tore a little at the... Missy. That isn't the kind of hurt I can fix. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I paused for a moment. Missy, do you want to live here with Liam and I? I asked her. She turned her head to me, confused. Do you want the Alpha and I to be your new guardians? We think you should pick but we were hoping you would like to pick us, I said. She looked between us for a minute. Would I live here? she asked finally. Yes, you would. You would get your own room right down the hall from us. The pack house would be your home forever, I said with a small smile. She looked down in her lap again. Can we have a funeral for my mom? she asked quietly. Yes, Miss Lily is going to make sure your mom gets a good funeral, I told her. She thought for a minute more. 
Finally, she nodded her head. Yes, please. I want to live here with you Luna and you Alpha. I got up and came around the table and wrapped her in a big hug. I am so sorry sweetie, I whispered. She finally broke down in real sobs. I was proud of how she had just handled all of that. I was standing in Missy's room with her. Liam had arranged one of the rooms on our floor for her since they were for the Alpha family. Damien and Austin had brought almost all her things from her house. Because she was so young, we decided to lock up the house and leave it for when she was older to decide what to do. Missy was standing in front of the mirror looking at her dress for the funeral. Are you ready? I said. Yes, I think so, she said quietly. She was holding up better than we had expected. She cried for most of the day when we told her and was certainly not as cheery. Liam's uncle said we should give her time to grieve and try to just give her a proper home for now. She turned to me and took a deep breath. I held out my hand. Let's go say goodbye to your mom, I said. She grabbed my hand. We met Liam and Felix in the hall and headed downstairs. The service was nice. There were more people than we expected there. Missy was brave the whole time, only crying as the casket was lowered into the ground. When we returned, Missy went to her room for the rest of the night. Liam told me not to worry. I knew she would need some time. She was only a little older than I was when I lost my parents, but she was worlds more mature. I laid in bed that night with Liam. He was watching TV while I just cuddled into his side. I was thinking about everything that had happened over the last few months. I was content but lonely at the inn. I never thought I would come back to the pack. Now here I sat, almost Luna of the pack and engaged. What are you thinking, little Luna? Liam linked me. I smiled and peered up at him. About when I will finally be officially Luna of Blood Eclipse, I said with a smirk. His eyes brightened. I had his attention at least. Epilogue 1 Liam I stood in front of the mirror as I adjusted my tie. You ready? Damien said from behind me. They are ready to begin. We should get to the front. I let Gavin come forward and one of my eyes darkened. Yes, I am ready, I told him. We made our way outside to the back of the pack house where the guests were waiting. The spring weather that rolled in a few weeks ago allowed us to be outside today. The fresh air was ripe with the scent of blooming flowers. Lily, Abigail, and Missy had gone all out. The grounds looked amazing. I stood at the front of the altar, all eyes on us. Damien, Austin, and Felix stood next me. Damien clapped me on the back as the music started, letting us know the girls were ready. Smile, man. You deserve it, he whispered to me. Amy came down the aisle first in a dark pink dress. Next came Abigail in a medium pink dress. She smiled at Austin the whole way down. Their baby girl cooed from the aisle seat as she saw her mom walk by. Then came Lily, plump and ready to pop in a light pink dress. I could feel Damien swell with pride next to me like he did every time he saw her. He was so ready for that pup to come. Finally, the music changed and Missy stood at the head of the aisle. She was in a similar gown to Lily but with some extra flowers on the top. I smiled at my sweet girl as she walked down the aisle scattering flowers everywhere. She stopped in front of me and I kneeled down to wrap her in a big hug before she bounced over to stand with Lily. Everyone stood as I looked at the head of the aisle. I think my heart may have stopped. Azalea. I fidgeted nervously as Abigail left us to walk the aisle. Just breathe, Lily said before she too left me. I took a deep breath and smiled at Missy. Okay, time for you to go. See you down there, I told her brightly. Don't break my alpha's heart, 
she teased as she bounced towards the aisle. I giggled at her. There was movement behind me, and I turned to see the old man hobbling over to me. What are you doing here? I am about to go out there. I said quickly. Oh hush, girl. They wait for you, it's your wedding. Now, seeing as you are absent an escort down this aisle, he said holding up his arm. My heart melted and tears threatened to fall. Now don't be doing all that. He dropped you off a few years back and left you to me. It's only fitting now that I give you back to the ruddy alpha. I wondered if this was Amy or Liam's doing, either way my heart could not be fuller. The old man wasn't my father, but I loved him dearly and appreciate everything he did to help me when I first arrived in town. I grabbed his arm and we walked over to the top of the aisle so he could escort me to my mate. Everyone stood and turned to me. I had been Luna now for four months and before, all this attention would have scared me. I was not fully used to it yet, but I felt more confident than I used to. Gasps were heard around the crowd as I stepped out and made my way forward. Despite his old age and use of a cane, Mr. Greyback held me steady and did not let me fall. I looked up to the altar to see my handsome mate staring at me in adoration. My heart swelled even more, and I could see a tear run down his cheek. I had never seen Liam so happy. I could not describe how it all made me feel at that moment. We reached the altar and Liam came towards me. His father piped up from behind him, who gives this girl to this man? I, Jonas Greyback, give this girl to this guy, he said as he lifted my arm and passed it to Liam. I may be old, but I will still hunt you down if you make her cry, he threatened. I smiled even bigger. He did not hate Liam at all. Would never dream of it. Liam said sweetly looking at me. He led us back over to his father who was officiating the ceremony. Lily took my flowers and we stood facing each other, holding hands. I smiled noticing that one of his eyes were darker, letting me know that Gavin was sharing control with him right now. Fitting as they were both my mate. Welcome, everyone to this very special day. Today. We are here to witness and celebrate an incredibly special couple, Alpha Liam Blackfur and Luna Azalea Simmons. Their love has faced more challenges than most, but we stand here today to celebrate their union. There was soft applause. This day not only will mark the union of our Alpha and Luna but also the beginning of a family. Azalea and Liam would like to announce that Missy Higgins has been officially adopted. Missy's face lit up. We had not told her that we got the paperwork last night. The bride and groom have chosen to write their own vows. Liam, his father said. Liam smiled at me like a lovesick fool. Azalea, you are my world, my better half. I did not know I was incomplete until I found you. I can never make up for the years we missed but I will spend the rest of my life treasuring the time we have. I promise to be the reason for your smile. I promise to give you everything you never knew you wanted. I promise to face every challenge the future holds for us with you by my side. I promise to always be your home. I promise to love you completely, without hesitation forever and always. I was really going to cry now. Azalea, his father prompted. I took a steadying breath. Liam, for a long time I was lonely and didn't even know it. I walked through my life just trying to be content. Then you found me, and the earth's axis shifted. You healed me in ways I did not know I was broken. Yes, we faced some challenges, but we overcame. You have loved me with intensity that almost scared me away. Now, I stand here on the best day of my life. You showed me what love can be and I promise to cherish that forever. I promise to be your voice of reason. I promise to support you in all the ways you need as Alpha and as my husband. 
I promise to always make your favorite fudge and peanut butter cake. And I promise to love you without reservation forever and always. Laughter and coos spread through the crowd. Damien handed Liam the rings. Liam, do you take Azalea to be your wife? To love and cherish, as long as you both shall live. Alpha Roberts said. Liam beamed. I do, he said. He slipped my ring on my finger then placed his in my hand. Azalea, do you take Liam to be your husband? To love and cherish as long as you both shall live. A tear escaped the corner of my eye. I do, I said as I slipped Liam's ring on. Liam, you may now kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the sincere pleasure of introducing you to your Alpha and Luna, Mr. and Mrs. Liam Blackfur. Applause erupted all around us as Liam pulled me to him and captured my lips with his. He bent me back into a dip for dramatic effect. I smiled into his lips as he pulled me upright. You're mine forever little Luna, he said leaning his forehead against mine. Wouldn't have it any other way. Our moment was interrupted by a yelp next to us. We turned to look at Lily holding her belly. I think my water just broke. Epilogue 2 Azalea I sat at my desk and ran my hands through my hair. Felix left me in my office alone for a few minutes to get me a cup of tea. I do not like using him as an errand boy and even now, a year after beginning his post as my personal guard, he is hesitant to leave me alone without Liam. Although I find the dedication to his job amazing, I thought by now my wonderful mate would relent a little. I sighed as I looked down at the applications scattering my desk. Amy had quit her job at the inn a couple months ago when she found out she was pregnant. Her husband had gotten a promotion shortly before that and her income wasn't necessary, so she was choosing to stay at home with the kids for a while. But I had not found a suitable replacement yet. I pushed away from my desk and ran my hand over my stomach. I was also waiting on a call from Liam's uncle about some test results. Liam did not know yet, I wanted to have it confirmed before I told him. I was sure at this point, Felix suspected me at least. My desk phone rang as if it knew I was thinking about this call. I swallowed the lump in my throat and answered. I was putting the finishing touches on the special dinner I had made Liam. I loaded the food onto two trays and linked my mate, dinner will be up in five minutes. You better not be in that office still. No ma'am. On my way upstairs now he linked back. I knew he was still working away. He had been overworking himself for a while now. His latest project was a new school in the human town as its population had absolutely exploded and the town has grown exponentially in the past year. He was working with the town leadership to make it a welcoming place for wolves as well as humans. I looked at Felix who raised an eyebrow at me. Pretty please. I said. He rolled his eyes but came over to grab one of the trays from the counter. We headed up to Liam and I's room. Missy was babysitting for Austin and Abigail tonight so Liam and I would be completely alone with no disruptions. We got upstairs and Felix set the tray down on the small table I had brought up earlier. It's okay, I won't leave the room and Liam will be here any minute. Go, go, go. I said trying to shoo him out of the room. He walked to the door and placed his hand on the handle. He looked over his shoulder and said congrats, Luna, before leaving the room. I smiled. He may look like a giant meathead, but Felix was one smart cookie. I busied myself setting the table with dinner. Then I dashed into the closet to pull on something nice before Liam got upstairs. I heard the door to the room open and I knew Liam was here. Little Luna, where are you hiding, he linked. I quickly finished changing and exited the closet to find him standing by the table looking at dinner. This looks delicious. What's the occasion? 
I need a special reason to make my mate dinner. I said sauntering over to him. When I stood in front of him, he wrapped his arms around me, pulling me flush to him. No, just wondering, he said nuzzling my nose. You have been working way too hard lately, and I thought, tonight we can eat a nice dinner and relax a little, I said softly. MMMM. That sounds perfect, he said in low voice. The sound traveled straight to my core. He chuckled. Let's eat and I will take care of that for you later, he said seductively. For more free novels, visit jobnib.com. I blushed and nodded. He pulled out my chair and I sat down. He took his seat across from me. We dug into the stuffed pasta and garlic roasted vegetables I had made. Liam moaned in appreciation. I giggled. I guess you like it. He nodded his head enthusiastically. You cook just as well as you bake, little Luna. This is incredible. It tastes like your grandma's. I said. Yeah, how did you know, he said surprised. Your mom gave me the recipe, I told him with a smile. He smiled brightly. We talked a bit about our days and what the plans were for the rest of the week. We also talked about the peace summit coming up that we would be attending. As we started the desert I made, I thought it was finally time to spill the beans. So, I got something today, I said cautiously. He raised his eyebrows. I pulled a folded piece of paper from the pocket of my skirt and handed it to him. He opened it and scanned it. His eyes shot up. Are we sure this isn't another? False positive? No, I said. Look at this. I handed him the small photo I had. His mouth dropped open as he looked over it. His eyes darted between the photo and me. Are you? He tried to ask in disbelief. Yes, Liam. I am pregnant. You're going to be a father again, I said. Liam, Liam, it hurts, Azalea cried as she squeezed my hand. I know, baby, I know. Almost there. Just breathe, I said as I stroked the top of her head. This entire pregnancy had been so difficult for her. My uncle had guessed it was a combination of her small size and the fact that she had not retained all of the abilities werewolves carry. Liam, I can't, she panted as her features contorted in pain. Her labor had come on so fast we could not get her the proper pain medication. Little Luna, you are the strongest person here. You can do this, I told her. Push baby, push. No. No, no, she whimpered. I squeezed her hand. It's okay. Just hold my hand and push baby. It will all be over soon, I told her. Alpha, if she can't push, we will have to convert to a caesarean. Please, she needs to push, said the OBGYN. Azalea, baby, you can do this. Just a little longer. Okay. Push for me, I tried again. I kissed he for it. Her features contorted in pain once again as she tried pushing. There we go. A little more Luna, one more big one, said the OBGYN. You're doing perfectly, Azalea. A little more. She screamed as she pushed again. Gavin was screaming in my head trying to get to his mate. The head is out. Luna give us just a little more, said the OBGYN. Baby this is it. You are almost done, I tried to comfort her. Tears were streaming down her face. She sobbed as she pushed with all her remaining strength. Soon enough we heard a small cry and relief came over her features. I leaned down and rested my forehead on hers. You did it, sweetheart. You did so well, I praised her. Her eyes were beginning to droop. Alpha, would you like to hold your son? 
Epilogue 3 Azalea Lily and I sat on a bench in the park. We were watching the kids play. Delilah, who was about to turn seven now, was chasing her little brother Lucas, four, and Liam and I's oldest son Liam Jr., who is six now. I rubbed my little baby bump as I looked over to the swings where my other son, Leo who was also four, was swinging away happily. Felix stood near him, watching all the kids intently. I can't believe you let him knock you up again. Lily said to me. Especially after how hard everything was with Leo. I nodded at her. It's the alpha in him. We are done after this though. Dr. Ron is monitoring me closely this time. He thinks I will have to be on bed rest before long, I told her. I loved my kids with all my heart but being pregnant had been difficult both times. I was pretty scared about this one. Liam of course was over the moon. His boys were his pride and joy. He was hoping this one was a girl. Damien wants another, but I think I am good with Delilah and Lucas. They keep me busy enough, she said. Yet. Yeah. We just got Leo fully potty trained at night and we are going to be back to diapers, I said with a sigh. How have Liam's parents been? We still have our ups and downs. Lissa wants this one named after Robert if it is a boy of course, I said. What does Liam think, she asked. Exactly what he always thinks, whatever makes me happy, I laughed. She laughed as well. Liam and Damien were really the sweetest men and did everything they could to make Lily and I smile. We could not ask for better mates. Leo came toddling over to us. Mommy, on to Lily, is it lunchtime yet? he asked. I gave him a smile. Felix was not far behind, walking towards us. Are you hungry now? I asked him, brushing his coppery curls from his face. He nodded vigorously. Why don't you go get Delilah, Lucas, and Junior? We can go find Daddy and Uncle Damien for lunch. He smiled brightly and rushed off towards the others. I linked Damien ten minutes ago. They are bringing lunch to us, Lily said. Felix joined us, nodding to Lily and me. Always so formal. Delivery for a glowing Luna came my favorite voice from behind us. And like magic, they are here, Lily said turning around. I turned around as well to see Liam and Damien striding towards us. Where is my princess? Damien said. Here, Daddy. Delilah shouted. All four pups were running towards us smiling. Liam stopped behind me wrapping his arms around me from behind the bench. He kissed my cheek. I missed you little Luna, he said softly. How's my little princess doing? Liam, we don't know that it's a girl. Either way, the baby is baking away in here. I got it until it's time to push, I told him. And I have you, he said, giving me a smile and nuzzle. He stood up. Who is ready for some lunch? he asked the kids. I rubbed some lotion into my belly from inside the bathroom. Liam was reading Leo a bedtime story. Junior declared last week he was too old for bedtime stories now although he still snuck into Missy's room at night. Even if she was going through a trouble-making phase at 16, she still cared about her siblings a lot. She did not take the news of my third pregnancy well and her behavior was worse lately. I thought about taking her up to the inn for a few days with me. Maybe Lemon could talk some sense into her. Now that Lemon was out of college and done with her partying and crazy antics, she was an amazing asset at the inn. And Missy idolized her. Liam walked into the bathroom and wrapped his arms around me, holding my belly gently. It was just barely noticeable right now. He rested his chin on my shoulder. What are you thinking about, little Luna, he asked. Missy, I said. 
Oh, yeah. About that, I gave him a questioning look. He continued, the school called earlier. Missy skipped two classes today before and after lunch. Because I am Alpha, the school secretary also told me that her boyfriend skipped as well, I rolled my eyes and let my head fall back against him. Not again, I said. I know, baby, he said quietly. I really tried to get her not to date for now. I just want her to find her mate and not have any lingering consequences. She is convinced Vlad is her mate, Liam's hands moved up and gently rubbed my shoulders. I know. I don't agree either. But her grades haven't slipped one bit and she still takes care of her chores. But we will not be able to ignore it if she continues to skip class. And then there is her babysitting job. I don't want her bringing Vlad along. What are we supposed to do Liam? Missy was such a perfect little girl. Even after her mom died, she didn't act out. I never thought she would do any of this, it was probably the hormones, but this was beginning to make me tear up. Hey, 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 little Luna, he said, turning me around to face him. His finger pitched my face up to his so I could look into his beautiful blue eyes. She is the perfect little girl because she is our girl. Kids do this at some point or another. It is not your fault. You are an amazing mother to her, adopted or otherwise. His eyes were warm, and his face had a sincere smile on it. I loved this man more than was possible. My arms came up and wrapped around his neck as his arms snaked around my waist. Holding me close. I would never tire of the feeling of being in his arms. I love you, my Alpha, I said with a small smile. And I love you, little Luna, he said kissing me sweetly. How about I show you just how much I love you, he said with a devious smirk on his face. I giggled as his hands gripped my A s and lifted me up. I wrapped my legs around him clinging tight. His mouth latched onto my mark, igniting my body all at once for him. Unknown. Like usual, I waited until the pack house and its grounds were still and quiet before sneaking into the jail. She did not even pretend to be asleep as she waited for my arrival. Gwyneth, I said. She jumped up from her perch on the small bed she has and came to the bars. Are you ever going to give me a name? she asked indignantly. You do not need to know my name. Like I told you, provide me enough valuable information and I will help you escape. Otherwise, I will stop coming and leave you to rot. It has been six years and you have not been able to convince the Luna to let you out, I said. She crossed her arms. Well, Damie told me something interesting today. Do tell. I said, intrigued. I had been visiting her twice a week for a year now, gathering information. Damien and her mother visited her enough that she got them to tell her things going on in the pack. The Luna is pregnant again. And Lily is worried this one will kill her. This is very interesting indeed. This is the end of book one. His Revenge is the second book. Synopsis of His Revenge Azalea and Liam find themselves dealing with all new struggles as they settle into their married life. Liam thinks he is managing things well until a prisoner is killed in cold blood with no suspect in sight. Things spin out of control for Liam. Azalea faces complications in her pregnancy. Missy pushes the boundaries of her adopted parents. Rogue issues increase. It isn't long before Liam is faced with a no-win decision that will cost someone their life. The rest of the audiobook will be continued on our Patreon account. Join us on Patreon to listen more unlimited audiobooks.